to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Matthew 11, 28. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to be in your house. We just thank you for all that you do for us, Lord. And I just pray that you open our hearts, open our minds, but most of all, open our ears to receive what you have for each and every one of us today, Lord. For you always have a word for us. I just pray that we'll be willing to accept it. Just guide and direct us in all we do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We're going to start over in Matthew. Chapter 16, verse 13. Matthew 16, verse 13. How many is, uh, is in expectation of Jesus Christ coming back very soon? The Bible kind of warned us in advance how the seasons and what will be going on. And, and uh, there is no, no question, no doubt about it. God has preordained. Hey, but he also pre-warned us, be ready in season, out of season. So it doesn't matter what it looks like, God's got it all in control. And if you're his child, you can have the peace that passes all understanding. We're all on a journey. You realize that? We're all on a journey. And everybody that's here today, we come as one on the journey. What tomorrow holds, we do not know for sure, but Jesus Christ does. Amen? Matthew 16, verse 13. And when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, man am? Who is he? The same question that was asked then is asked to us today through the Holy Spirit. Who do you say that Jesus Christ is? And you realize if we said and was able to write it down and put it all up here on the table before us, we'd probably have many different <coughs> answers. Whom do men say that I am? That is where we're at in our life's journey. Who do you say he is? Do you know that he's your Lord and Savior? you know that there's no other way to heaven but through him? He is a way to truth, to life. There's no other way. And he said in verse 14, And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But who say you that I am? We can say a lot of things about Jesus Christ. He's our Savior. He's our Lord. He's our all in all. But who is He to me personally? He's my Redeemer. He's my hope in tomorrow. He is my blessed assurance that Jesus has all things in control in my life because I give my life to Him. And He knows what's going to happen even before it happens. All He tells us to do is have faith in <coughs> Him. Do you faith, put your faith in circumstances, situations, or do you put your faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? He says, I'll work it out when we submit ourselves to Him. In verse 15, He says, And He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And He's making it very personal. And that's one on one. I stand here all by myself. You sit there all by yourself, but yet we're in a room full of people. But whom say you that Jesus Christ is? He's my Redeemer. He's my Lord and Savior. He's forgiven me my sins because I've, I've confessed my sins, and the Bible says He's faithful and just to forgive us. If you're here today with sin in your life, or you're listening to this message with sin in your lives, today is the day of salvation. Do not put off to tomorrow what you should do today. Well, tomorrow will probably be a nicer day. But will you be alive tomorrow? Only God knows the day and the hour, not us. 
But when that Holy, when the Holy Spirit speaks to us and touches our hearts and, and compels us and we put it off, we're taking a chance of a lifetime. We need to know that we know that we know that we're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. And how can we know? Because I've confessed my sin and He's faithful and just to forgive me of my sins. Do we sin more than once in a lifetime? Yep. Do we ask for forgiveness more in a lifetime? Once in a lifetime? Yes. Whenever the old enemy sticks his head up, if you do not rebuke him and he has just a little bit of a foothold, you better rebuke him and ask Jesus to forgive you. In verse 16, it says, Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and he came for what? A purpose. Because till Jesus come on the scene, there was no hope for no one else. Very few that the Bible talks about really made it. So many times, what do we do? We turn our eyes back on ourselves and not upon Jesus Christ. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven through the Holy Spirit. On that day, when we stand before him, every tongue will confess where we are at. Are we going to confess that Jesus Christ lives within our hearts? That I, I ask him to forgive me and he's forgiven me of all of my sins? And he, I walk with him and I talk with him on a regular basis. And how do we talk with him? Through prayers and reading his love letter. The Bible, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. And if you do not hide the word of God in your heart, the devil will manipulate each and everything that you think in your mind, and he's going to put you in condemnation. And when the Bible says we are not, because we are bought with the price, the blood of Jesus Christ. Mark. Chapter 8, verse 27. He says, And Jesus went out and his disciples into the towns of Caesarea, Philippi. And by the way, he asked his disciples, saying to them, and he's asking us today, Whom do you do men say that I am? Whom do men say that I am? Who is he today? Who is Jesus Christ? Our Lord and Savior. How many ways is there to heaven? One way. Thank you. One way. One way to heaven. That's through Jesus Christ. There is no other way. Whom do men say that I am? Question fits us. Who do I say that he is? It's personal one-on-one. -on -one. Who do you say that he is? And only you can tell through your journey of life from day to day who you say that he is. When obstacles come your way, who do you say he is? My Lord and Savior, my all in all. We're all on a journey and it started from that little one back there when he was born Till the day we pass on. It's a journey. Do we help one another on the journey? Yes, we do. How do we help each other? By the Word of God. We share the love of Jesus Christ one with another. It's what the Bible says. And they answered John the Baptist. This is their answer to him. Who do men say that I am? Even then, he says, and they answered, John the Baptist. But some say Elijah, and others, one of the prophets. It doesn't matter what everybody else is saying. You realize that? What are you saying? And he says, and he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? 
And if we go around the, the building and you're standing in front on a stage in front of a thousand people you don't know and they ask the question, who do you say that Jesus is? What would come out of your mouth? Oh, he is a great man. Man, he created the world. Man, he's done all these things. But it's personal. Whom do you say that he is? He said, he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Peter answered and said unto him, Thou art the Christ, the Savior of the world. He is our all in all. He's the only hope that we have. If you never heard the word of God, you better pray that somebody had knocked on your door and shared Jesus with you and you said yes to him because there will be no excuse. Well, if nobody tells me, so you don't have a radio, you never heard Christian broadcast stations, you don't have a tele television, you never heard evangelist speak on that great day when you stand before him and you said, I never heard. And it's going to flash through your mind or however it works each and every time you had the opportunity to say yes to him. But I never went to a church. But you heard the word of God. The Bible says no one will have an excuse, not a single person, to go to heaven without Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And the Bible says even nature itself shows God's handiwork. God in nature itself, God, it shows God's creation. God shows himself so many different ways we do not have an excuse. Thou art the Christ. Is that what you say in your life? Thou art Art the Christ, the Son of God, that came for one purpose. And on this journey from Genesis to the end of Revelation, it was for that purpose He came, that everyone on the face of the earth would have an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Everyone. For even, the Bible says, before he ascended up on high from the cross, he first descended and set the captives free. Think about it. Where was them captives at? They was in bondage, tied up, but the Bible says even in hell there was a great gulf that separated them. And Jesus come back and he preached the word of Jesus Christ to them and they saw with their own eyes and heard with their own ears and they had the choice to say yes or no. And at that point the Bible says the, and, and hell's gates were widened. When Jesus Christ died, what did he do? It's a question a lot of people ask. I believe he died, went to hell, as king of kings, as lord of lords, and spoke to the words to everybody that had never heard, and they had the opportunity to say yes or no. For the Bible, even the Bible says when he died upon the cross, and then when he died, he says, the saints, the dead of the dead saints was seen by many. It put it all together. What do we have? We have God's grace in mercy to make sure no one has an excuse to say no to Jesus. You might know a person that goes to church and man, they're the worst sinner I've ever seen in my life and they're still sinning and they're still doing all that. What does that have to do with your eternal relationship with Jesus Christ? Nothing, not a thing. We're called to be a what? A witness. How can we be a witness if we do not know Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior? Where are we going to send them? Well, I'll just send them to church. Well, that's a start. But we need to know the Word of God and able to share the Word of God that we can see lives change. It's personal between us and God. John chapter 6. Verse 
35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never thirst, and he that, that believeth on me shall never thirst. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. I left out hunger. Didn't sound right, so I had to reread it. Will never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Jesus is the bread of life. We will never hunger. His blood was shed for us. We will never thirst when we know Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. When we take communion, it's representing what Jesus Christ done for us. It's representing the word that I believe with all of our hearts when we take that bread, it's symbolic, as the scripture says, that Jesus died for each and every one. He says, take, eat. We say, well, how can you eat his flesh? It's symbolic of the flesh that he shed for us. Take this cup, the juice we drink, his blood, symbolic of what he did for us, and we drink it. So when you read in the scripture, it says, we eat and we drink, put it in perspective, representing what he did for us. Loved us so much. Could have called 10,000 angels. And I know I've spoke this over and over and over again, but he died alone for you and for me. That is love. But I say unto you, that ye also have seen me and believe not. Better to never have heard, better to never have seen, than to hear and see and believe it not. And there's a lot of people who do not believe in Jesus Christ, but guess what? Doesn't matter. They're still going to stand before him on judgment day. Depart from me, workers of iniquity, for I knew you not. So if you're out doing crazy, you better think twice. Are you doing it for God? Or are you doing it for the world? And so many people are doing crazy for the world. Jesus said, love those who despitefully use you and do all manner of evil against you. Love them. Why? That may be perchance we can see a life-changing experience in that person's life. And only God through the Holy Spirit can do that. We can't do it. All we can do is be that light. But I say unto you, he that, that ye also have seen me, and believe not, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that, over, that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. What is it saying? It's saying, I don't care how bad you are. I don't care what you've done. If you truly, from your heart, come with repentance and ask Jesus into your heart, he will forgive you. And so you cannot even say, Pastor, you do not understand what I've been through, what I've done in my life. God does, and he says right here in the Word, Come unto me, all ye that labor. Everyone. It's a choice, though. In verse 38, For I come down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. Jesus Christ come for one purpose, that we can sit here today and hear the word of God and accept him as our Lord and Savior and be what he's called us to be, a witness in a lost world. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should rise it up again at the last days. How many believe life is pretty short? How many that's over 70? I'll raise my hand on that one. Anybody that's over 70, does it seem like just yesterday you a little kid running around? Does it seem like life? And some of us can't hear you. Sandy, tell him again if you need to. Okay. <laughs> ben Henry, part of me. For better or worse, richer or poorer, till death do us part. 
Okay. In verse 40 it says, This is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. Do you believe? Is he within your heart? If somebody come in here, that we're blowing this building up, and everybody goes out, you're saying you do not believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? What are you going to do? Kind of rock in the hard spot. Maybe I'll just start preaching to the person that comes in here. How about that? Everybody do what you need to do. Preach the Word of God. Everybody has an appointed time. That's what we have to realize. Death will come. And it will not catch God off guard. He knows the day and the hour. Be ready in season, out of season. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray Him. Talking about Judas Iscariot. He knew it. He knew it all along. He did not change His message. He did not change His word. He preached the love of God and that who He was, the Son of God. And it was up to Judas Iscariot to say, Yes, I'll follow you or no. What's in it for me? He was a treasurer. And yet he was a thief stealing from the treasure. Treasury. And even Jesus knew it, but he never once said, We don't need you here. He left him there on that journey to where he would not have an excuse on that day of judgment. And he said, Therefore say I unto you, that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. And the Father's will is that all would repent. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Remember hearing that before? Many of his disciples. He had his 12 disciples. And as we know, we'll hear one of them tricked him, stole from him, did all kinds of Judas, but he had many other disciples. It's kind of like a church. Who's the pastor? I'm the pastor. But I'm also a disciple of Jesus Christ. And who else is the pastors and disciples? We all are. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. We are all called to do the same thing. And it says, Then said Jesus unto the twelve, We well Will ye also go away? And you know what they said? No, we're going to go with you wherever you go. All twelve of them, I believe, said that. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the word of eternal life. The word of eternal life. The word of God. And he says, And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And he was speaking for all twelve of them. And Jesus answered them, Have ye not I chosen you twelve? Jesus chose the twelve. And one of you is a devil. Jesus chose the twelve. But yet he says, One of you is a devil. Judas walked with Jesus, and a lot of people say, well, he was a disciple of Jesus Christ. Yeah, he went out and hung himself, but don't you think he still went to heaven? No. The Bible calls him a devil, and he went out and killed himself. No. It's a choice. Judas knew what he was doing along life's journey. We ourselves should know what we are doing along life's journey, if it's pleasing to God or not. And he spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. Self-explanatory. Telling you exactly what's going to happen before it happens. He knows. He knows our journey. And he is putting you here at Honeywell Mission Church 
to hear the Word of God. He's putting other people at different churches to hear the Word of God. He's putting evangelists overseas to hear the Word of God. He's putting the Word within our mouths and in our hearts that we are the witnesses. Go and tell the world. We individually are called to do the same thing, to share Jesus Christ. Do you know who you are? Do you have that blessed assurance that you know that Jesus is yours? Because you ask Him into your heart, you know He's faithful and just to do that? My brother, Dale, Lord just blesses Him and blesses Him and blesses Him. He comes in and says, Pastor, I need some rain. Doesn't say it quite like that, but he might as well. We pray for rain. One or two times, it rained. Saw the clouds out west of town. Didn't see them nowhere else. Talked to my brother. And he said, I said, did you get some rain? He said, yeah. He said, I don't think it rained anywhere else. Is that is that not true? Yeah. Amen. God can do what He wants, when He wants, how He wants, and He wants to use each and every one of us to be a witness in a lost world. You say, well, you just don't understand. I don't have to understand. Jesus understands and He knows your heart. If you do not understand, that means there's something not right in your heart. And the Bible says, come unto me. Oh, you that labor. How are we laboring? When we do not understand what's going on. Surrender ourselves to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and He will direct our path. We should be the happiest people on the face of the earth because we know we're heaven bound. But yet we should have a heavy heart because we look around us and see how many that are not heaven bound. Or ministry field. How many believe that you're going to see people I'll never see in my lifetime? Every hand should go up. You you might see, see people in, in another state that's family or something that I'll never see in my lifetime. We all individually are witnesses for Jesus Christ if He lives within our hearts. We're called to do one thing after we give our lives to Him. Go and tell a lost world, neighbor, friend, whoever it might be, that Jesus loves them. The response is not back to us. It's back to Him. People do not understand what God means to true believers. We don't have to fear death. We don't have to fear anything. We don't have not to fear the virus. And that's not saying we don't wear masks. We don't do these things. I'm just saying as far as fear, if you believe with your whole heart and you have an appointed time, you're going to die. You can have 20 masks on, and if it's your turn to die, you're going to die. What happened to them? They smothered themselves to death. They had too many masks on. <laughs> We have nothing to fear but fear itself. Nothing wrong with common sense. Nothing wrong with doing right. But when the fear moves in and it controls each and everything we do to the point we don't do anything, we're off base. I'm telling you what, if you feel like people are sitting at home say, I'm not going to church, okay? Have you been on your knees before God? Have you been on your knees praying for everybody else? Have you been on your knees for your neighbors, your friends, that they will receive Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior? Have you been doing what you're supposed to do? Love people. We're called to do the same thing. If I come for one purpose and I just share the work and go home, I'm off base. My heart is to see lives change for Jesus Christ. Not because of what I've said, because what He is saying through me through the Holy Spirit as He speaks through you to other people how many people can you say 
I run into this day and I kind of felt the unction of the Holy Spirit to say something but I didn't say anything and went all about my way. How many? Your mission is to share Jesus. Our mission to come to church is a fellowship one with another, encourage each other, and hear the testimonies of what God is doing. We do not do testimonies, I've said that before, but to hear what God is doing behind the scene. God is well, God is at work, and God is about His business, saving people. Where are you at in your journey? When you stand before Him, or is He going to say, well done, my good, faithful servant? Or is He going to say, depart from me, worker of iniquity, for I don't know you. I never knew you. Depart. Can't play a game with God. We can play a game with people, but we can't play a game with God. He knows us from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. Make sure your heart is right with God. Make sure that Jesus Christ is on the throne of your heart. And make sure you listen to the Holy Spirit. When He points somebody out, maybe in a store or wherever the case may be, He says, go and say hi. And you might just say, okay, hi. I recognize you. I've seen you on the film. You go over to Honeywell Mission Church. The door is open. Not because it's Honeywell Mission Church, because the Holy Spirit opened the door for us to share His love with someone. He works in so many strange ways that we can't even understand. But He's always opening the door to share with others. Where are you at in your journey? And if it's all good, we sing the song, All is well, all is well, all is well in my soul. Shall we all stand? Most heavenly, gracious Heavenly Father, we just pray as we come to you, Lord, that you have touched lives this day, Lord. Not necessarily for salvation, but to move on in salvation in their journey each and every one of us as i preach i preach to myself i preach to each and every one that you allowed to be here this day to be what you call us to be a witness in a lost world i just pray that you'll help us keep in in tune keep keep that light shining in our lives lord that others can see jesus in us that we can have the peace that passes all understanding i pray that each and every one that hears this word today will search your mind, search your heart, search your soul, and make sure that it is well with you and God. I pray that you just guide and direct us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.